Hi there, it's Nicole here for Lawn Fawn, and today I am sharing a card made with the adorable Here We Go A Waddling Stamps and Dies. I'm going to be using the Landscape Stitched Hillside Backdrop to build the background scene for my adorable little singing or Christmas caroling penguins. I'm also going to be using some of the elements from the Portrait Stitched Hillside Backdrop and show you how well they work together. To save a little bit of time, I went ahead and stamped my images off camera. I've got the trio of penguins, another one of the penguins from Here We Go A Waddling, and the light post. In all, there's the trio of penguins set, and then four individual penguins in the Here We Go A Waddling stamp set, as well as a little ringing bell, some music notes, and tons of fantastic greetings and sentiments. You can mix and match and really customize the card to work for whatever um, kind of seasonal type of card you're creating. Along the bottom of the screen, I have listed the Copic colors I'm using for different elements of the design. I stamped the images with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. This is an ink that works fantastic for Copic coloring. It's not going to bleed. I started with the light. I wanted it to appear that the light is glowing from kind of the bottom up. So the colors of Copic markers I used for that are listed. And then the penguins to build up to the black shade or tone of the majority of the penguin image. I am using warm gray markers to get that effect with warm gray five, six, and eight. For the lighter areas on the penguins, I'm using warm gray zero, zero, and one with a little R00 for the cheeks on the penguins to pinken them up. They're out in the cold after all, so I want their little cheeks to be nice and rosy. The penguins' feet and the beaks are all in YR04 and 09, which I believe was listed here just a little bit ago. I'm still finishing up my penguins. Now it's time to accessorize. For the first scarf, I've got R24, 27, and 46 to make this a red scarf. You might notice in the photos of the finished card that I did add some detail, lots of detail, to these images. I kind of did some of that off screen. So I colored everything and always my final touch for any card is to go back and see if I want any finishing touches. And in this case, I'm gonna do quite a bit of white pen work and some glossy accents to really finish them off nicely. Any of the additional accessories I'm coloring are all listed here along the left and bottom of the screen. I tried to list them out as I colored, starting with that blue hat on the right of the screen, the pink scarf, the yellow songbook, I'll go on to the green earmuffs here in a little bit, and then the blue-green hat and the teal songbook. Basically, just wanted these to be really bright and fun. In my mind, I was thinking rainbow colors. No, they're not going in rainbow order or anything like that, but I wanted this to be super bright and fun. Before I started coloring all this, I did do quite a bit of die cutting, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. Again, I did a lot of that off camera to save time. You don't want to watch me rolling and rolling through my Sizzix die cutting machine to die cut all these cute little houses and trees and things to build the scene. But when I was die cutting those, I used Lawn Fawn cardstock in a rainbow assortment of colors and that very much dictated what colors of Copic markers I'm using to color in my cute little penguin scene. The bright fun colors really make this a fun card. I just absolutely love it. Now I am going to die cut these images with the coordinating Here We Go A Waddling dies. Just pop all of these out and I have slowed down the video into kind of regular time. I speed through it a lot to kind of help save on time so you're not sitting there for an hour and a half or so watching me create a card and get distracted and all of that. But here are all of my components. And I slowed this down because I wanted to show you where everything came from 
um, where it's not speeding by. This is the landscape stitched hillside backdrop. I absolutely love both this and the portrait. They create fantastic scenes immediately. I am a huge fan of creating scene cards and anything that I can use that helps that makes me so super happy. So I used a house and the frame from the landscape, but this is the portrait. It has those fantastic trees, another little house, and I'm gonna mix and match those. It also has these little rectangles that you can die cut and pop behind any of the door and window openings for a contrasting color. And for in this instance, it makes it look like the lights are on. I really, really love these dies. I love how well they work together, depending on whether you wanna create a landscape or a portrait style card. They are basically the same design and you can mix and match the components to build fantastic scenes. For this card, the penguins are gonna be in the forefront of the card. The houses are gonna be kind of background noise, quote unquote, and I did die cut three frames to stack one on top of another, and I'll talk a little bit about that when I put the card together. This is the insert from the background of the frame. I only kept one of those. The rest I just slip in my pocket and save for another time. For this, I wanna stamp my greetings from Here We Go A Waddling. It's gonna read, it's penguining to look a lot like Christmas. I absolutely think that's hysterical and fun. I knew that's the one I wanted to use when I set out to do this card because I just think it's so punny, so much, you know, just really super cute like Lawn Fawn is known for, and it makes me happy and smile. I went ahead and added my white embossing powder to the greeting. I know it's super hard to see here because it's white on white. I'll hold it at an angle here in a little bit so maybe you can see it a little better. I did that because I knew I wanted to add the music notes from the Here We Go A Waddling stamp set. There, maybe you can see it a little bit. Um, so that I could do embossed resist. They're Christmas caroling, they're singing. So I thought the music notes were the perfect kind of embellishment there up in the sky next to the greeting. I'm going to add, I think, five of these music note stamped images kind of on either end of my greeting. I love the movement of the greeting as well. It does not go, none of the greetings, well, I guess a few down at the bottom, go in straight lines, but most of them don't. I think that really kind of lends itself to that Christmas caroling type feeling. I'm gonna heat set the white embossing powder. The white embossing powder is new from Lawn Fawn. Fantastic embossing powder. I cannot say enough great things about the white embossing powder. It's pure white beautiful embossing powder. Now once I have my embossing heat set, I'm ready to add color with embossed resist. I'm using Blueprint Sketch and Salty Ocean Distress inks directly on this Nina Smooth White cardstock. It can be a little trickier to blend on regular cardstock as opposed to a watercolor cardstock or Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is very forgiving and quite a bit easier. However, if you kind of remember to use a light hand and work your way up to intensity, you generally can get some really nice results. The more saturated the paper gets, the easier it is to blend. I'm also using a light hand coming in off the edge of the cardstock to help keep all of those harsh lines from the powder or the uh, foam tools away. I'm gonna spritz this with water from a distress sprayer and first I'm gonna buff off any ink that might be sitting on top of the embossing, pardon. Then I'm gonna spritz this with water from a distress sprayer and let those droplets really saturate into the paper. I wanted it to kinda almost look like a snowy type of background without actually having to add snow. I've got all of my components now and I am going to add some Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen to those yellow rectangles that go behind the die cut houses. That way it makes the windows look kind of glittery. I like to do it before I put the house together 
That way, in case I get messy with the glitter brush pen, I don't get any glitter on the house and it stays just in the window. I've done it both ways and I really prefer when I remember to do it before I assemble the house. There is the adorable little house. Now I'm going to decorate the little houses and trees by taking my glossy accents with a fine tip applicator drawing some lines of glue on the chimney and also on the design on the roof and then sprinkling on some of the amazing lawn fund fundamentals prisma glitter this is beautiful glitter i'm also adding shading to the houses with coordinating distress ink colors so i'm just trying to pick colors that match nicely for the teal house i used peacock feathers for the red house i'm using fired brick again i'm going to take some glue draw little lines all over this along the roof and the chimney at least sprinkle on that glitter and set that in place i am using some fine tip tweezers to hold my die cuts I'm a little bit nervous because it's glossy accents and it is gonna take a little bit to dry. I don't wanna get my fingers in the glue. By using these tweezers and moving the pieces around, I don't have to worry so much that I might accidentally mess them up. I'm gonna set those aside for just a second and I wanna put down one layer of the house. Now, earlier in the video, I was talking about multiple layers with this um, landscape stitched hillside backdrop. The reason I'm doing this instead of foam adhesive is those three edges or the top and the two sides are so super thin that it really is hard to put a foam adhesive there. You could, you could also definitely die cut this from fun foam and use fun foam as a layer. But what I like to do when I don't want a lot of dimension but I want a little bit is to cut multiple frames and stack them one on top of each other. For this card there's going to be three frames. It also really makes the side pro profile of your card look a lot nicer. You're not going to see any foam adhesive or anything like that. You're just going to see a few layers of cardstock. This is one of my favorite ways to put together a card when I want a little bit of dimension. So the background is flat to the back of the card base, and then I'm gonna attach the houses. Part of the reason I went ahead and put the first layer down, the first frame and the background scene, was as I am decorating all of these little die cut houses and trees, I can go ahead and put them in place. I'm using liquid adhesive. I already had it out. I was using it to attach the glitter to all of my elements, and it just was really easy to do it that way. I'm using my fine tip little tweezers here to kind of hold things down in place as I'm working. Assembling the trees. I added some shading to the bottoms of the trees with mode lawn distress ink. Very, very light. Again, using my tweezers to hold on to the shape while I sprinkle on the glitter, keeps my fingers out of the way, and I don't make that mess that I tend to make sometimes. You're starting to see that little village take shape. I don't know what it is about little villages, but I think they are so super cute. They are all the rage. Lawn Fawn has several adorable ones, both the die cut version here. There's also a stamp set with little houses you can color, and I love them. I think they're so super fun and fantastic, again, for scene building, which is one of my very favorite things to do. My last little house has picked raspberry and spiced marmalade coloring in the roof and the house. I drew on the glue, sprinkled on my Prisma glitter, and I'm going to go ahead and shut that. I think I'm, I will add just a little bit more Prisma glitter when I finish up some of the rest of the images and attach them to the card, and I'll share that in a little bit. But the houses, the background building is really done. So that final back layer is the houses on the distress inked background with the greeting for the penguin that's by himself he has his eyes open so i'll use a black glaze pen to add detail to those for the street light i'm going to take the wink of stella clear glitter brush pen and go over the light area to make it glittery 
And then I'm going to grab my additional two frames and pop them one on top of another. I think that here's a good example of that little tiny bit of dimension and how nicely it frames up that background. Now on the foreground of the card, we wanna add the light post and I'm gonna put a little foam adhesive back behind the top portion of this. It'll make it lay a little bit nicer, a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna add a layer of glossy accents to the light itself to kind of make that look like a glass lantern there with the light inside. I'm also at this point going to draw lines of glue against both of those stitched hillsides. Now instead of the Prisma glitter, I'm gonna just take a chunky type of glitter you could use Prisma glitter, you could use whatever you have. This is just some glitter I had at home that I really like. That way it kind of keeps the sparkle and stuff on the tree tops. And this is more texture than anything. Gives it that nice kind of snowy type of texture. Go ahead and put the rest back in the little container. I purposely left a little spot where I knew the penguins were gonna go open and I'm going to attach these with my favorite thin adhesive squares from Scrapbook Adhesives. They add dimension but are nice and flat. On the middle penguin stocking cap, I added glue to the brim and the pom-pom, and this is where I'm gonna sprinkle Prisma glitter on that to make it a little glittery, and add glossy accents to the penguin's noses and feet so that they're glossy. I will do the same thing to my remaining penguin who I'm gonna tuck over here next to the light post. Add glossy accents to his nose and feet. Then there is this adorable little music note thought bubble from Here We Go A Waddling. I stamped this in quite a few colors. Sunflower, carrot, lobster, freshly cut grass, and blue jay. And, a peak, and peacock, I believe. I'm only going to use four of them. I really thought I might use more than what I ended up using, so I tuck the remaining ones in the stamp pocket where I keep my stamps and dies. That way, if I ever need them, they'll be there. I'm going to add these with some glue dots to the background sing. So three little thought bubbles for these, the little trio of penguins, and then I'll do another one over to the left next to the penguin by the light. And the remaining two I am not going to use. I love the little pop of color this adds, the brightness, it matches the colors that I used to color in the images as well as the houses in the background. I will add detail with a white and stardust pins to the scarves, the muffs, add highlights and all of that and my card is finished. Thanks for joining me today for this bright and cheerful card featuring the Lawn Fawn Here We Go A Waddling Stamps and Dies. Please be sure to check out the Lawn Fawn blog for more information. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.